Hey everybody and welcome to episode 3 of our Rick McWhorter AM transmitter. So uh, let me show you where we are. Uh, we've got a little progress here, nothing major to report. You'll see I'm showing you top side here that I have a pilot light that's lit and I have filament on the three tubes. Now these aren't the right tubes, this is a 6V6 and they need a 6L6, I gotta dig that out. And this is not the 6SA7, it's actually another 6L6. But that is a 5Y3 rectifier. So I've got everything um, wired correctly and I've got a power cord. I'm going to flip it over and show you what it looks like underneath. So let me do that. Be right back. Okay, so here we are bottom side. And uh, I'll just point out a few things. So on the back here you'll see I've got a... a looks like I'm going to have to put a battery in here. Hold on a second. Don't you hate it when the battery runs out? Okay, so anyway. We have a power cord going in here with a strain relief. We have a two amp fuse right here and we have an on off switch. And over here we have our pilot light. Okay, this is a, a 120 volt AC uh, pilot light here. This is no DC here, it's all AC. So typical wiring, we have our wire coming in, we have our black wire going to the fuse, uh, we have one side of the transformer going to the fuse, we have the, uh, the neutral side of the power going to the switch. The other side goes back to the transformer. And then we have the pilot light, pilot light wired in, one side to the fuse and one side to the switch. And, uh, and that's essentially it. You'll see I've got my ground here connected with a star washer. I've got my other two grounds connected here. And you'll see that I have all of my filament wires neatly wrapped. All right, the yellow is the 5 volt, the green is the 6.3, and the red is the high side. And you'll follow along the path here, and you'll see this um, braided uh, orange and blue wire that comes up here is the actual filament. And you'll see that I've got the filament wire tucked in neatly here in the corner. So I don't have to worry about anything with hum or buzz or anything like that. Not buzz 1151, just regular buzz. So I've got all of my filaments wired. Everything is neatly tucked in. This is the wire that actually comes off of the uh, rectifier tube that goes to the rest of the circuit. So I've got that hanging out right here but I'm trying to keep this build as neat as possible. And this is going to be the area right here where I put all my components. And I'm just going to mount a bunch of terminal strips and, um, and start that build process. I have it all laid out. I know exactly what I'm going to do. But I am going to wait until I get that tuning capacitor because I want to see where I'm going to mount it, make sure I drill the holes first before I stop mounting anything here. And of course, there's nothing on here because this is for the antenna. Um, so, um, so essentially I have the entire uh, power section done right in here. Got all my tubes, filaments all light up nice and neat and you can see I've got the entire real estate here in this, in this uh, chassis to play with. So uh, that's a pretty good feat. So uh, this entire section right here is power. Everything else is going to be uh, components. So that's the, uh, that's the story. That's where we are. It looks very neat on the back. Typical power fuse and power, and, uh, power cord. Um, I also have my 3 millimeter stereo jack, uh, which I'm not sure where I'm going to mount that yet. I may do that on the front. And um, I also want to think, also want to experiment with that frequency counter, putting that there, but that's uh, for another day. So anyway, let me uh, do a little more work and I'll come back and uh, give you the update. Be right back. Okay folks, so the time has come to uh, make some decisions what we're going to do here. So um, the first thing I want to do is I want to do a special shout out to our good friend John from Arkansas. John always comes through. So um, John, in his uh, company that he just retired from, told us a story where they would throw out these relays. And this is a solid state relay. It's a delay, and this one is a variable. And what would happen is when they would these things would burn out, <clears throat> they would throw them out, and John being John said, hey, wait a minute, that's an 8-pin octal tube there. I could use that for something else. So um, John was, was very, very gracious enough to send me one of these to use for my antenna. So um, if, you, if you look at this thing, it fits right there. And all I really have to do is remove the cover, take out the insides, mount the antenna right through the hole that comes out with this knob, and then I have a removable antenna. So I don't have to worry about it breaking, I don't have to worry about replacing it, um, if I'm going to move the unit, I simply just unplug it, and it's good, right? So that's, um, that's going to be uh, the first thing that I do here. 
Let me use two hands and get this out of here. Socket's nice and tight. So that's the first thing. So I have to, th uh, th again, thank John publicly for that. Um, I'm going to use that. That's going to come in handy. So um, I went through my tube stock, and uh, I have all my tubes. This one I had to order, the 6SA7. That goes here. These are just tubes that I put in to test the filament. And this is uh, the, a 5Y3, so I don't really need that one. I have another one here. So I have my tubes, and I also received the output transformer. And if you remember on the diagram, the output transformer is right here. But you got to remember, you're not connecting it to a speaker, right? Um, it's going to be actually used for your audio input. So I need to figure out how to wire that. So on this transformer here, the red and the blue are the um, sides that go to the to the power, right? This one, this blue one, I think will end up going to the, right here, to the 6L6 output tube, right here. And this red one, if I read this correctly, will come through a 47, 4.7 microfarad cap. Polarity is not important, and go right to ground. Then the other side of this transformer right here, this green and this black, which is this side right here, should go to my input my three millimeter input jack. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not positive of that yet. More research to do. But I have another question that I asked Rick McWhorter uh, on his uh, Facebook page and I haven't gotten an answer to that yet either but I'll pose it for you. So you'll see on this diagram we've got this ground symbol and a ground symbol here and a ground symbol here and we've got a bunch of them. One here, one here, etc. And you'll look here in this little legend it says the ground symbol indicates B minus. Okay? So, the question I have is, is B minus the chassis? Interesting question, isn't it? Um, if you look at the schematic here, the third wire from the, pre from the grounded plug goes to earth ground, which appears to indicate this chassis. There's a death cap, it looks like, going from the chassis to the chassis. That doesn't make any sense. So the question is, what's B minus? Is there a separate rail that I need to create for B minus? I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research before I start building. So that's going to be a question uh, that maybe one of you can answer. I know, John, when you built yours, um, you may know the answer to that if you remember. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes. I'm not quite sure that B minus is the chassis. Not positive of that. So I'm going to need to research that. But if I look at the 6L6 tube, you'll see they've got pin 1 going to what appears to be ground. That is normal for that tube. So I'm thinking it's one and the same. I just don't understand this configuration going from ground to ground. Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, before I start building anything, I'm going to have to ask the question. So that's that. Then the next thing that I, I have to report is I got my tuning cap. Look how small that thing is. And um, that's really good because I have some options on how I'm going to mount it. So my first option is to use this wooden box. It's, a, it's an old watch box. All right? And I have a nice little flip lid. I could mount it here. I could mount this inside. The only problem is the shaft would be a little short. So I would have to drill a nice hole in here and make sure the knob fits in. So I could do it that way. And then I'd have to figure out how I'm going to mount it. Um, it could be through these screws right here in the front. But I think that would be a little too much work for what I'm looking to do. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to print a piece on my printer. So the, the, the piece that I print will be a flat platform right here that in the corners allows me to screw it down with nut and bolt and there'll be a piece that comes up in the front like an L shape right like this and that will allow me to put this up flush against it and use these screw holes to mount it so it'll basically sit right above here isolated from the chassis there'll be a front to it like this so that you can't touch it when you're turning the, the selector knob 
And I think that's a pretty simple design. That's an easy piece to make on the uh, on the printer. So I think I'm going to do that. That's going to be how I manage that, and it'll probably be pretty close up to the front here. It's a shame that it can't touch the chassis because I could have mounted it inside like this. But um, I think that would be too much of a challenge, and it would obviously touch the chassis, and we can't do that. And then the last thing I'm going to need to figure out is assuming that I put the uh, the tuning cap like right here, what do I want to do with this meter? Like that. Okay? So um, I have to decide, do I want that meter? I'd like to do it if it's there. So I may also print a little box to put that in. Pretty simple design, it's just a little box. And then the last thing I need to do is mount this uh, this power switch, and that's going to go somewhere around here, like that. So, um, so before I start mounting anything underneath, I've got to get this layout knocked out. I've got to get this thing right, and make sure that I'm uh, make sure that I'm on the mark. And the reason why I want to have this meter is because, um, you know, when you have the power switch, it, it kind of tells you uh, what mode you're in, which is good. But I may, I may choose to skip this, I don't know yet. But again, it's something I could do just like that, and it would look pretty neat like that, right? With this, uh, with this box here, with the antenna sticking out. And then this front um, will be plain, unless I can get the frequency counter to work, and then the frequency counter will mount right here. It's a digital frequency counter. Uh, it's got blue, blue letters. And that would be really cool if I can get that to work. And when you tune it, your frequency pops up. But that's going to be um, part of the experiment, I guess, right? So, um, so that's where we are. We've got all the pieces. Now we got to plan and measure three times and four times. But my immediate question is, what do I do with these ground points or these B B minus points? Are they really ground? So, if anybody has any insight into that, I would appreciate it. I'm also going to pose the question to Rick and see what he says. Um, and that's going to be it. And then we're going to start to build underneath after I get all this stuff mounted where I want it. And um, as John had suggested from Arkansas, check your voltages. So here I've got the voltages. So V1 and V2. For example, V1 pin 3 it should be 167 volts DC. Here's V1 right here, pin 3. It's the plate. goes right to the... Um, goes to the toilet paper roll. So, got to measure that. Let's see what we get when we build it. We've got plenty of time for that to happen yet. These are the scope. When I, when I get this thing built, I can connect my oscilloscope right here at this point. And based on high power or low power, I should get a difference in my sine wave. This is unmodulated output. So, um, so that's the story, my friends. So, uh, more research for me. I'm going to go on the computer now and I'm going to design these parts and then I'm going to start printing them. So um, I'll cover that in the next video and when I come back in the next video I'll show you what I've landed on and what I've decided to do and what I've printed. So, um, so that's it for this one. Um, again I have, to, uh, I have to thank John, Joe or none, for sending this along. Really great guy and uh, I can't wait to rip this apart. Maybe in the next video I'll do this so you can all see how it works. And I'll take this apart, and we'll see what's in there, and we'll figure out how we're going to cannibalize it and use just one of these pins for the antenna. So all it takes is one. Okay? All right. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next episode. This is Ron. And one more thing. Of course, there wouldn't be a video without a PS. <clears throat> so I do have this wooden box that I was thinking about maybe mounting here. And I can easily mount the uh, tuning cap in here sticking out and I can also mount the meter so uh, decisions 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 so the question is does it look really cheesy with that wooden box there I don't think so so I may end up doing that rather than printing we'll figure it out so that's the plan alright I'll see you guys in the next episode